welcome to the Grandland video blog for books that came out on November 25th, 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. We've got 11 books to cover in 10 minutes, so we're just going to get right into it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 613, The Gauntlet, continues. And uh, as my friend Anthony said, part two is definitely better than part one. Not that I didn't like part one, but part two is really interesting. Was getting the story going a little further. It was nice to see an Electro picture, you know, uh, from the last one. To kind of talk about who he's, where he's been, what he's been up to. And now a whole new, you know, I mean, a lot of action in this book. Some great storytelling here. Mark Way is definitely hitting the high notes. The gauntlet is getting very exciting. So definitely great stuff from the Amazing Spider-Man crew, as always, as I always say. A uh, very, very important thing to mention, Chew number one in trade paperback. Chew volume one uh, collects issues one through five of this image comic series. If you haven't seen this, you've probably heard about it, but it's really hard to see because I think it went into something like five printings of number one. And um, it was on a flip book with Walking Dead, and then the Walking Dead issue sold out. It was really, really insanely hard to find, uh, and with good reason. Volume one here of the first five issues is only $10, and we've actually already sold out of it. We got more on order. It is a stocked item through Diamond Comics, so ask your local comic shop to get this. It's about uh, Tony Chu, who is the main character. He gets psychic impressions from whatever he eats. and. The world is pretty much the same world that we live in, except for the bird flu has made chicken illegal to consume or possess or anything like that. So it's really darkly twisted and funny, but at the same time, kind of a little gross, but hilarious. Great book nonetheless. Fantastic first five issues. So much stuff happens in the first five issues. You know, I'm very excited to see where John Lehman uh, is going with the, with his story because he, you know, he had this great setup and then he tore it all down all over again just to end a story arc. It's fantastic. So definitely check this book out. It's great fun. Uh, it's well worth the hype. Detective Comics 859 is here. And again, you know, we say it all the time. Rucka, Greg Rucka hitting his high notes, you know. Rucka and Williams hitting the uh, great story for uh, Batwoman's origin. And Rucka and Cully Hamner talking, uh, doing the uh, question backup story. So it's just very nice to see these characters and... Uh, I can't, I can't even go into any further, you know, I mean, it's, it's what it always is. It's, it's a great Batwoman story, it's her origin, so it's part two, you know, we're going back through some stuff that happened to her and kind of setting up who she is. And meanwhile, the question backup story is still part of a larger story arc, and it's, it's fantastic. It's a great book, one of the best $4 I spend every month. Fantastic Four, 573. Uh, the Fantastic Four go to New Earth. You know, and, and this imagery and, and what we've been told is going to happen on New Earth is absolutely nothing like what's in this book. Now, it's a minor quibble because Jonathan Hickman writes it and it's fantastic and that's how it is. But it's just, I don't know. It, it kind of struck me as odd that I'm like, okay, when is this scene going to happen? And it doesn't. It's very much a bait and switch. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff that goes on in the middle. So... Um, interesting new direction and they kind of come back and then we're good to go so the it's always still a good book with jonathan hickman writing it but definitely not what i expected to see not a johnny and ben buddy picture which is what i wanted to see what i expected to see gotham city sirens number six is here and obviously just like streets of gotham it's almost like batman the animated series is back because you get these little snippets it's really fun this book still hasn't quite materialized into the way that I was thinking it was going to be, which was uh, Charlie's Angels with the Riddler being Bosley, but <laughs> it's, not, it's not happening. But still, it's a very good book. Um, very interesting characters. Paul Dini, you know, has his finger on the pulse of the Bat universe. He can handle these characters. He can do it very well. Um, tells a nice little story about a side character from a long time ago without making it seem like he's doing any, you know, retroactive you know, changes, massive overhauls to the character. Good stuff, fun story. Green Lantern 48, uh, I can begrudge Blackest Night all day, and I will. Blackest Night number five is sitting up there and I did not read it and I'm not going to read it. However, Green Lantern 48 uh, continues the trend of Jeff Johns and Doug Monkey putting up some really good story here. It's, this should be the Blackest Night crossover. It's almost like this was written first and then Dan DiDio went, okay, Jeff, we got to write a big crossover book, you know, and, and there's Blackest Night and it's this huge crossover book and it's, it's about a Green Lantern event and how it interacts with non-Green Lantern people. Well, guess who's the most important people in the Blackest Night Green Lantern crossover? The Green Lanterns. And this is the book that dictates what happens to them. 
This is where you need to be if you really want to read a really interesting story about Blackest Night because the story at its core, at its heart, is about these people in this book. Guardians of the Galaxy number 20 is here and you know we've been dicked around in this book for about six issues now with time travel and continuity and changing things and you know characters dying and coming back and now we're going to treat it as if all these other characters that got killed by Magus in issue 19 are actually dead. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea, but we're going to see. I mean, this book definitely is on the brink right now. Abnett and Landing really have to make their decision. If they're going to take it in that direction, you know, salvage that direction and go with it. But you lost a lot of great characters and a lot of great interaction with the end scene of number 19. So um, I'm worried. I'm worried. This is kind of at a tipping point. This story in general is very good, but um, but the, the overarching concept, the the... We, the status of the team is very much in check and, and it needs to be taken care of. Oh yes, Image United number one came out and you know, we'll just drop it right there. Uh, Kirkman writes a story that is very much a 90s image story. It's, oh, it stinks. It just absolutely stinks. There's just, you know, random character shows up. Random other character is punching him now. Oh, here we go. You know, and, and you're telling it through Portacio's new character fortress and it, it's, no, it's not good. It hurts. The art, I mean, it's pretty to look at. It's definitely a 1992 image book. If you like buying your books to look at them more than to actually read them, uh, you'll be right at home with Image United number one. Secret Warriors number 10 is on the stack, and uh, I like my Jonathan Hickman like, my, like, like I like my Raisin Brand. Two scoops, bitches. Here it is, uh, the other Hickman book of the week. It's fantastic. This is an amazing story about Ares' son and what he's going through. It's the end of the God of Fear, God of Man, or God of Fear, God of War story. Um, dealing with, you know, who he is and, and, and how he got to this point. It's not so much about Nick Fury's different team of characters. And Thor is on the cover, but Thor didn't actually appear in here, which was fantastic. Um, but it's about gods and the nature of gods. And, and it's just a great single issue uh, in terms of looking at these characters. This does more for Ares than that Ares miniseries that came out before the Mighty Avengers even did. Like, it... it so much better look at Ares and his son and their relationship and, and where they're going. Uh, and Hickman does a great job. He always delivers. Secret Warriors always delivers. It's a fantastic book. Not what I expected from it this month, but great nonetheless. Spider-Man the Clone Saga is at its halfway point, number three of six. And um, I, keep, I keep sitting on the fence and I go, you know, was this really written in the 90s and stuck in a drawer somewhere? And then... You know, it's, it's tough to say, but I really feel like this issue finally cemented it for me. There's a lot of bad dialogue. There's a lot of just insane, like, video game style discussions. What about Ant-Man and Mary Jane? Well, you see, Peter, blah, 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 blah about clones. No, I don't care about them. What about Mary Jane? Oh, Peter, it's not about them. It's like, who talks like that outside of a video game? Well, 90s comic book characters do. You know, Bendis has already paved the way for people not talking like that. But in the 90s, that's how comic book characters talked. And it wasn't good, but it was there. So they've gone through and they've spruced it up. They've dropped in funny little references. There's a Sopranos reference in here. Number one had that American Idol reference, you know, kind of make it look like it's been updated, but it's not really updated. But still, overall, this is a fun idea in terms of the actual story they're executing. When you actually read it panel by panel, page by page, it hurts because it's a 90s comic. But the, like when you finish the book and then you recap to yourself, okay, what did I just see happen? Then you kind of go, okay, that's an actually good story. And it worked pretty well. Lastly on the stack, Superman 694, Mon-El's new direction and new look. And really, isn't that telling that this guy's been around for, I don't know, three, four months in this book? If that, and he's already got a new look and a new direction? This is not good. This is not a good sign for this book. It needs to, you know, it needs to deliver or bring Superman back. I hate to say it. I know that they've been trying to, you know, not bring Superman back. They've got all these other characters they want to deal with. They want to expand his universe. They want to do that. It just looks, it smacks of editorial panic is what it, what it smells like to me. And it wasn't all that great. So sorry, everyone. That's kind of bad. Thank you all for watching. I hope I made it in time. Hopefully there's no jump cuts in there. Uh, we'll see you next week. I uh, hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Talk to you later.